Welcome to a lesson on inequalities in one variable. In algebraic inequalities, a mathematical sentence connecting an expression to a value, variable, or another expression with an inequality sign. Let's begin by reviewing the inequality symbols or signs given here. This first symbol is the less than symbol. As an example, we can say that two is less than four. Notice how in the number line, two is to the left of four, and therefore we know two is less than four. Looking at the negative values, notice how we can also say negative four is less than negative two. Notice how the inequality symbol points toward the smaller value and opens toward the larger value. The next symbol looks almost like the less than symbol, but we have half an equal sign here below the less than symbol. This is the less than or equal symbol. So because two is less than four, we can also say two is less than or equal to four. But because of the equal part here, we can also say that negative four is less than or equal to negative four. Negative four isn't less than negative four, but it is equal to negative four, and therefore this inequality is still true. Next we have the greater than symbol. So if we know that two is less than four, then it would be true that four is greater than two. And if negative four is less than negative two, then negative two is greater than negative four. If we compare negative two and negative four in the number line, notice how negative two is to the right of negative four, and therefore we know negative two is greater than negative four. Now if we compare these inequalities to these inequalities, Notice how in both cases, the inequality symbol points toward the smaller value and opens toward the larger value. Next we have the greater than or equal symbol. So if four is greater than two, of course four is greater than or equal to two. But again, because of the equal part, we can also say negative four is greater than or equal to negative four. Because of the equal part here, this inequality is true. And then finally we have the not equal symbol. For example, four doesn't equal two, and we also know negative two doesn't equal negative four. Now let's talk about the solutions to an inequality. A solution to an inequality is a value that makes the inequality true. So for example one, we're asked to determine whether the number four is a solution to the following inequalities. So we'll substitute four for x, and see if the inequality is true or false. If it's true, four is a solution. If it's false, four is not a solution. So for x greater than one, we'll substitute four for x, which would give us four greater than one. Well, four is greater than one, and therefore this is true, which means four is a solution to this inequality. Next we have x less than one. Substituting four for x, we'd have four less than one, well, if four is greater than one, it can't be less than one, and therefore this is false. Four is not a solution to this inequality. Next we have x less than or equal to nine. So if x is four, we'd have four less than or equal to nine. Well, four is to the left of nine on the number line, and therefore four is less than or equal to nine. This is true. Four is a solution to this inequality. Next we have x greater than four. Substituting four for x, we have four greater than four. Well, four is not greater than four, it's equal to four, and therefore this is false. Four is not a solution to this inequality. And last inequality, we have x greater than or equal to four. So if x is four, we'd have four greater than or equal to four. Well, we know that four isn't greater than four, but four does equal four, and because we have the greater than or equal symbol, this is true four is a solution to this inequality. Now for these examples, we're given an inequality. We want to graph the solution set with the interval that satisfies the inequality. And we're going to show the graph two ways. That's why we have two number lines for each example. Our inequality is x greater than two, which means we want to graph all the numbers in the number line that are to the right of two. Notice how two does not satisfy this inequality so we don't want to include two in the interval. So again, there's two ways to show this graphically. One way would be to make an open point on two. The open point indicates two is not in the interval, and then because we want all numbers greater than two, we would graph to the right of positive two, 
and we would be approaching positive infinity. Instead of using an open point though, we can use a rounded parenthesis instead. So we can have a rounded parenthesis here on the number line and graph to the right. So two ways to express the same solution set or the same interval. And now using interval notation, notice how the interval is from two and then approaching infinity. So we'll start with two and we're approaching infinity. And then because we don't include two in the interval, we use a rounded parenthesis here. This is why you'll often see the graph with the same symbol on the number line. And then for positive and negative infinity, we always use a rounded parenthesis like this. Now for the next interval, we have x greater than or equal to two. The only difference is in this interval, two is included. So using open and closed points, we would use a closed point on two and graph to the right. The closed point indicates the value of two is in the solution set or in the interval. And the second method, instead of using a rounded parenthesis, we use a square bracket opening to the right. And then again, we graph to the right. So using interval notation, again, the interval is still from two approaching positive infinity, but now because the interval includes two, we use the square bracket. And for infinity, we always use a rounded parenthesis. Next we have x less than two. Now we want to graph all the numbers that are to the left of positive two, not including two. So for using open and closed points, we'd have an open point on two. We'd graph to the left, and now we're approaching negative infinity. Or for using parentheses or brackets, we'd use a rounded parenthesis opening to the left, and then graph to the left. So using interval notation, notice how to the left, we're approaching negative infinity. To the right, we're approaching positive two. We don't include two, so we use a rounded parenthesis, and we never include positive or negative infinity, so we use a rounded parenthesis. In our last example, we have x less than or equal to two. So using open or closed points, we'd have a closed point on two, indicating now two is in the interval, because two is less than or equal to two. Graph to the left using parentheses or brackets. Because we're including two, we use a square bracket now opening to the left and graph to the left. So the interval approaches negative infinity to the left and two to the right. Here it includes two, so we use a square bracket. And for negative infinity, a rounded parenthesis. So in general, if we have a less than or greater than symbol, then we'd use an open point to graph, or we would use rounded parentheses. And if it's less than or equal to, or greater than or equal to, when we're graphing, we use a closed point, or if we're using parentheses or brackets, we'd use square brackets. Now for our last example, we're asked to write an inequality to represent the following situation. Clearly indicate what the variable represents. So A, in order to go on the ride, a child must be more than 48 inches tall. So let's let H equal the height of the child in inches. So because the child must be more than 48 inches tall, we would say that H is greater than 48. Notice how they can't be exactly 48 inches tall because it says more than 48 inches tall. In example B, Jordan can spend at most $10 on lunch. So let's let L equal the price of lunch. So because he can spend at most $10 on lunch, he could spend exactly $10 or anything less. So we can say that L is less than or equal to 10. Okay, I hope you found this helpful.